Welcome back for another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a super simple five gallon bucket filter. Before we get started, just to go over the material that is needed. So it's super simple. All you need is a drill and a few drill bits. Go over what I use those for in a sec. A bucket, a five gallon bucket, the lid, you can see those holes there. I'll show you that. Some filter floss, lava rock, some of this uh, filter sponges. You can use other sponges, but I'll post links to all of this in the description and some hosing. That's pretty much, and the pump. So that's pretty much all you need to build a filter. Also some hosing, I mean some uh, rope to make it easier to grab the filter. But this is a submersible filter, so this is gonna sit inside the pond instead of outside of it. So to pull it in and out, depending on how deep your uh, pond is, you can just have some rope attached to it. So that's pretty much all you need. So the first step you wanna do is drill the holes into this filter. So this is a, filter, a bucket that I use for a different filter, so ignore this hole. I'm gonna use this for the cord from the pump, but you can drill a hole through the top, just a bigger hole through the top for the cord to come through. Otherwise, the first hole you wanna drill is this one. And originally I used a 3 16 drill bit, but it turned out to be too small for the hose. I didn't measure correctly when I did it, or the hose I measured on, which is that one, was too small. So then I had to go with the bigger size, which is this one, which is too big, but that was the only way to, for me to drill that hole a little bigger. So that's the first one. After that, you wanna drill these holes in this bucket, I mean in the lid, as you can see here. And these holes are basically allow suction. So how it's gonna work is you're gonna have your pump at the bottom, and then all the sponges and stuff are gonna go through here, and it's gonna pull water through there. That's why, hence, you want this hole to be exact so that no water gets pulled through there. So we see how it works with my bigger hole. I might have to plug it or whatnot. But otherwise, this is gonna be on top. The water's gonna get pulled through here and pumped out through there. So pretty simple. This is not gonna, it's just gonna get pulled water through here. And it's gonna go through the filters as well. Otherwise, typically your filter's just gonna be have the hole at the bottom, the holes at the top, and one bigger hole just for the cord. So after you have all the holes drilled in the lid and the bucket, the next step is to grab your pump and put it at the bottom. So I got my pump right here. It's only 260 gallons, which is okay. I should get a bigger one, but it's what I have. So we'll stick this guy at the bottom. Then we'll take our hose. I don't know what size this is, but this is the hose I have. And then I'll stick it through the bottom hole right here. Again, as I said, you want it as tight as possible to limit water getting sucked through here. If I need, I can block that off. Otherwise from there, then you'll attach it to the pump on the inside. This is gonna be to protect it from the lava rock that I'm gonna put in there, the screen, but you can use different pumps if you want. This is the pump I'm using. And then that guy's gonna sit at the bottom like so. And then my cord, as I said, I'm gonna use this hole that's already here, just to have it come up and up through. Otherwise, if I didn't have this hole, I would just drill a bigger hole at the top and just have the cord go up through there. So it's basically gonna go up the side of the bucket and then through the lid. So after we get our pump in there, we got that pump in there, we can grab our lava rock. So the purpose of the lava rock is just to provide surface area for the beneficial bacteria to grow to break down the fish waste. And this will do that, pour that in there. So there we have that lava rock nice and covered at the bottom, pump sitting right there. And then after that, we'll take our filter floss. So basically the water's gonna be pulled to the top, right? So you want your finest mesh, which is this filter floss to catch the finer stuff to be right here at the bottom, like so. So you got all of that in there. And then after that, we'll grab all of these sponges which are perfectly round. I wish they didn't have this hole in the bottom, but they're coming from a specific filter, which is a Laguna filter. So I'll just plug the hole, but basically they'll just fit perfectly in there. Like so. And then at the top, or if you have extra filter floss, if you have extra filter floss, you can just plug that. I just got this piece of weed barrier and that'll go like that and then your lid goes straight on top and it'll pull the water through here. So that's pretty much the filter. It's super simple to build. As I said, just there's that one hole and these hole at the bottom and a bigger one for the cord instead of this. To clean it, all you do is gonna be taking off the lid. 
I would definitely recommend getting a gamma seal lid like these so you can just unscrew it, except not with one hand or like that, versus having to pull this off. It's not attached yet, but it's gonna be a lot easier to unscrew this to clean it versus pulling this off. I mean, you're not gonna be cleaning it every day depending on how much fish you have, so you might be fine with this one if you wanted to, you just gonna have to pull it off. Otherwise, after you take that off, you just take all the stuff out, rinse it out, and then put it back in. So super easy to clean, super easy to build. And for me, this hole is just gonna add as an extra suction through, so it's gonna be pulled in through the top and through here. So that's all that's gonna do for me. It's not gonna interfere with anything. So here's the tanks that I'll be using the filter on. There's two IBC totes. I can't fill them all the way to the top because I have holes that were drilled for a different purpose, but basically my pond is leaking. So temporarily, I'm gonna move these fish just into there. It's only gonna be like a week or so. Drain all this out, let it dry, and then I can, when I get my patch, I can fix that. So otherwise, so the bucket naturally just floats. You just gotta fill it up basically with water and let it sink. Here we have the filter in this tank right here. So as you can see, the water's, well you can't really see, but the water's getting pulled through the top there, going through this hose, and then out into that tank over there. And then from that tank, it actually circulates back down through there. I probably, if I will do this again, I'd probably put a 90 right there to make it a little cleaner. So it just goes straight up and down. And then in your pond, you probably do want to like secure it with rocks around, depending on how big the fish are. But otherwise out goes up from there to here. That's gonna circulate the water. I do have an extra aerator in here for when I have all those fish in here. And then again, the water goes through there, through this pipe, and to the other one. So it basically circulates. Also another thing, it's nice to get a pump with a longer cord. Mine has a pretty short cable. So for more flexibility, it's always nice to have a longer one, especially if your pond's deeper, if you have to have it farther out. This cable literally only goes right there. Like maybe six inches from there. So it's not that long of a cable. So I changed it up a little bit. I got this 90 here at the bottom and then in the inside I have it attached like that. So both this little piece here and this 90 and this piece of liner. So I didn't have any gasket. So I just cut a piece of liner and put a hole in it. And this actually uh, closes this off because I noticed it was sucking through there. And this will may allow me to make it a little more cleaner and have the pipe just go up. Otherwise the simplest way is just to do it how I had it before. Just have the pipe attached through there, have the hole exact, and just have it go through the bottom part there. Otherwise, this just makes it a little more cleaner, but you do need a little more parts, and I just had all this stuff lying around. Here's how the filter floss actually looks after one day. So I made the filter yesterday, and then I did upgraded it today, or this morning, and this is how it looks already after one day. So you can see it's working. The only thing, though, I would make these holes bigger, because if you do have a lot of leaves getting in your pond, I noticed that some of them will get clogged. So if you have them a little bigger, the leaves will just get into the filter. Also, I'm adding more lava rock just to cover the bottom, the entire bottom of the, the system since I have more space. So now the entire bottom is covered up with lava rock, so you can't see the pump at all. And that's pretty much how it looks upgraded. I got the pipe on there. That little fitting makes it easier or makes it cleaner, a cleaner look. You can go up there. You can angle it to whichever way you need. Got that gasket, as I said, my hole is a little big, so this is gonna prevent it from sucking, sucking through there. And now it's only gonna suck from here, which is for the cord, and then from up at the top. We got some more air bubbles for the koi as well. So there you have the filter. I have to have it on this side though, so I can't have it just go straight up because of this cord is so short. So I had to go through here and then connect it here, especially because I want to connect it to this pump, which I have over here. So there you have it, just a super simple five gallon bucket filter. If you do have any questions, remember to leave them below. Otherwise, if you like this one, check out these other filter videos up here and I'll see you in the next one.